Hello and welcome to the NevilleResearch.com video. Today we're going to examine something very interesting. At the University of Manchester in England, there is a copy of Shakespeare's sonnets from 1609 with an inscription on the last page. And nobody knows who wrote this inscription and we're going to investigate it together whether Henry Neville might have written this inscription. John Casson, I believe, was the first person who ever suggested that it might have been Henry Neville's handwriting. And initially, I was very skeptical of this claim, but I've done a tremendous amount of research into this, compared it with dozens and dozens of Henry Neville's letters and other handwritten documents. And I think there is really quite strong evidence that it may be Henry Neville's handwriting. Now, I want to emphasize from the beginning, this is an, a historical, a factual question about who made this inscription. So, good, careful, historical research will help us to determine who made this inscription. What I'm going to be presenting in this video are facts about Henry Neville's handwriting as best as I can determine them. And I'm going to honestly show you where the handwriting is similar to Henry Neville's and where it's different to his typical handwriting. Now, if you look at this inscription, it's obviously stylized. Whoever made this inscription intended it to be uh, you know, a, a gift for somebody and to look nice. They've centered it on the whole page. Let's look at, take a, a step back. They've centered it on the page. It's written in a very stylized and fancy manner. And whoever wrote this clearly planned out what they were going to write ahead of time and uh, did a beautiful job with it. It says, commendations to my very kind and approved friend. And then this says BM. So who wrote this inscription and to whom they were writing it is unknown. Who is BM is completely unknown. So this video and I have a blog post with much more details and more comparisons and more information. They are designed to further our understanding of this inscription and to give us one suggestion of one possible author of the inscription. And that would be Henry Neville. So the first thing I'd like to look at is the word commendations. Now, as you can see here, the first letter, the C, is very large relative to the rest of the word, and it's written in a very unusual style. Now, I've never seen Henry Neville write something in quite this way. I've never seen anyone write anything in quite this way. And the style of this C is really not similar to the style of the rest of the inscription. So this is really the most distinctive feature of the entire inscription. So if we can find someone who makes a C like that in another document or in another inscription, that would be very interesting. Uh, so if anybody knows of such a, a similar C, please let me know. The rest of it is pretty standard secretary hand. Um, it's C-O-M-E-N-D-A-C-O-N-S. So there's essentially two letters missing here. Usually the word commendations will be written with two M's and then an I after the C. And typically, as far as I've seen, in most people, handwriting of that period spelled it with a C when they wrote it out by hand. 
rather than with a T. Now, the this mark here is an abbreviation mark, and it was very common in secretary hand at the time for people to write this specific word with an abbreviation mark. So that's what this mark here, it's an abbreviation mark. There are two lines here in the abbreviation mark. Now, it may be that those two lines are meant to indicate that two letters are missing. I don't know. So that's something that we can investigate further. What are the other distinctive features of this? Well, uh, one of the distinctive features is that it is standard secretary hand. There's nothing idiosyncratic about how this is written. The, uh, the C, like we said, is idiosyncratic. And then this, on the S here at the end, this line, this sort of half circle is unusual. So I've never seen anything quite, quite like that. And if we could identify someone who made that in their handwriting, it'll be of great interest as well. So now that we've looked at this, I'd like to compare it a little bit with Henry Neville's handwriting. Now, writing commendations in a letter was extremely common at the time. And Henry Let Neville also very commonly wrote that in his letters. And so I have a bunch of examples here. Now, these examples are really strikingly similar um, to this. So we can look at this M here. It's almost identical to this. The E here is tilted, but besides the tilt, it's identical. The line from the N, from the E to the N, the shape of this, how it goes up to form the D, all of this is identical. Now this is tilted a little bit. This is tilted this way and this is tilted this way and these are straight up and down in the inscription. But if we look down here, it's a little hard to see. This was a pen trial from Henry Neville, but you can see that the D is straight up and down here and the E is a little hard to see in this case. But we have many examples of Henry Neville writing E's straight up and down or tilting them to the right. He does both does it both ways. The A is slightly different and throughout the inscription the A's are a little bit more rounded than Henry Neville typically wrote them. Now this could be an indication that somebody else wrote this A or it could be an indication simply that that's the style he chose for this inscription. The C is absolutely identical. Um, there's no I here, so we're gonna, this is the same as here. We're going to go down here. There's no I here. The O is the same. Uh, the formation of the N is the same. The formation of the S is the same, except for this um, idiosyncratic markup here. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom here and look at another example, very high resolution. Um, once again, the O is the same, the M is the same. This one has, of course, two M's. The formation of the E is the same, even though this has the tilt. The formation of the N is exactly the same. This line goes right up, goes down, up, and over down. Same way, the D and the A are not connected. They're not connected here. They're not connected here in the same way. The way that the A here connects to the C is the same. Obviously, there's no I. The O, even the shape of the N is similar. And the N here and the N here is not connected to the O. And then the formation, this is really remarkable, this and this. Are remarkably similar. Now this has a little um, maybe curve down here as opposed to this. So it's a little different there. But you can see just how closely these match. And what's really remarkable and why I think of all the pieces of evidence we're going to look at this is the most important is that Henry Neville 
pretty much always wrote this word exactly the same way. And since people wrote this word so often in their letters, it became sort of a signature for them of how they wrote it. So uh, we have one, two, seven or eight examples here of him writing this word over and over again, almost exactly the same way, and every single one matches this. So this is a very, very important piece of evidence. Now, I've been asked uh, by people to get do some control samples, prepare some control samples to compare. So I have gone through uh, state papers online and also some of the letters I have from my Henry Neville research and just to look at examples of other people writing commendations. And as you will see, uh, going through these, none of them is even close to the same. Now this one is, is a little bit similar and um, this one is a little bit similar, but about 20 examples here, and only two or three of them are anywhere close, and none of them is really nearly as close. So there may be two or three are close or similar. This is standard secretary hand. You're going to get a lot of similarities, but nothing is as close as Henry Neville's and we Henry Neville it's not I'm that I'm cherry-picking Henry Neville examples he is consistently writing this in the same way over and over again so this is a very strong piece of evidence now Henry Neville does abbreviate this in other words and I have examples of that so this abbreviation mark look how the shape of that and compare it with this one and th this one, this one, and this one. As you can see, it's the, it's the same shape. And there's a little dot here, little dot there, little dot there. Same shape. So we have the same shape and the same style. Um, and then here we have the word commendations written out with only one M. So that is similar. Um, as well. Now, this giant C, like I said, I don't have an example of Henry Neville writing something like this, but in his later correspondence, he does do things like this, right? I write two like this. So writing is to the right honorable, my very, right worshipful, my very, is what he writes here. And so this is a, two and there's giant t um and you can compare it to this giant c now the style is a little different um but the general idea is the same and here are two examples of henry neville writing a c uh something similar to this he often wrote a c in a different with capital c in a different way sort of like the way we'd write it in these days but he did use this form of c and you can see some similarity there. So um, overall, this is the first piece of evidence, the first word. And I want to focus on that first, and then we'll go through the rest of this inscription. Okay, so let's go to the rest of this first line. And the first example, too, I really have cherry-picked examples. So the reason is that Henry Neville wrote the word to in a dozen different ways in his letters. There are radically different ways he's written it. Even in the same letter, he would vary it a great deal. So I've gone through his letters and found examples that match, but they match very closely. So just to give you some idea, like even this, this base here, sometimes he'd write a T with the base, sometimes he'd write the T without the base. Sometimes he will connect the T with the O. Sometimes he won't. There's just a great deal of variation. And the shape of the T and the shape of the O. But these examples are very close. And this example is almost exact. You can see how it's sort of fatter up here. This is fatter up here. The angle's the same. The line. Um, 
this is very similar, this is very similar. He does tend to curve the top of the T. Um, this is not curved. But as I'm going to make this point over and over again, this inscription is stylized. So it's not going to match anybody's, whoever made it, it's not going to match their everyday handwriting. They were writing it in a stylized way. Um, but these two are a very close match. So it's very consistent. It's certainly possible that Henry Neville wrote this. Now, for my very, um, there is some interesting things to note about the my very. First of all, the two my Ys are different. They're formed in a different way. So this is, this whole thing is one pen stroke. He's going, doing this, going this, down, up. But this, he's, appears to be two, two pen strokes, this one. Now, Henry Neville wrote Y both ways. So this Y matches this Y. And this, this Y matches this Y. Okay? So, and uh, probably this Y. So Neville wrote the Y in both ways. And that was a characteristic of his handwriting that he would do it both ways. So this is consistent. Um, in my experience, when you're looking at handwriting, many people wrote the word my the same way or a similar way. So it's not a good way to distinguish people's handwriting. But we have examples here of my, and they're certainly consistent with Henry Neville's handwriting. Over here, uh, we have him writing my very kind, very hearty. He doesn't write kind, he writes hearty here, but it's very similar. So here, the I is a, a letter, and then the K is the inscription, and you can see the similarity. So here, the Y is similar to this Y. Uh, all these Ys are sort of fancy Ys, and they're, they're similar style here. The way the line goes down here and up is very similar. The shape of this line goes down and over, down and over is very similar. Um, this E is one of the types of E that Henry Neville made. So he varied his E, and uh, this is a more formal E. This is a less formal E. But as you've seen before, Henry Neville makes an E like this as well. So let's go back and look at the very the the very we have a lot of examples of him writing very here and they're very consistent if you look at uh compare uh control samples you'll see that very was written in different ways some people wrote it uh r i e and um many different other other styles too, other spellings too. But Henry Neville consistently spelled it this way. And you I have example after example here where it's very similar. So look at this E is very similar to this E. Uh, the B is this one is tilted. This one's up and down, but otherwise very similar. The R is the interesting question though. This R and is unusual. Um, Henry Neville usually wrote an R like this. Most of his R's are like this. So you can see that this type of R. But sometimes he wrote an R like this, which is more of like a V shape, but there's always a little tick down here, usually. So this one has that, this one has that, um, this one has that. But this one kind of has a tick, and this one, to me, doesn't have a tick. And I have some other examples of him writing the R without a tick. And this is sort of like how he wrote it in italic. So there, are, the whole inscription has this type of R. So there's two possibilities once again. Henry Neville made a stylistic decision in this inscription to make his R like this, which is consistent with other R's that he did make, though not his common way of writing R, or somebody else made the inscription. So um, 
That's another open question here. This R is distinctive and is an important clue one way or the other. But overall, this very is, you know, obviously very similar to these. The same thing with kind. Now, Henry Neville varied his word final Ds tremendously. So I have examples here with the and. You can see all the different examples. And they're certainly consistent with this. Okay, but look at this D and look at this D. They're completely different, right? But look at this K and this K. All right, these are extremely similar. Now, this is a little more squat or a little bit more less carefully written. But this is an inscription, and he's trying to make it look fancy. And these are just handwritten letters uh, of no special importance. And you can see the similarity in the handwriting. This K is very similar. And um, all of these are quite similar. Now, once again, it's important to realize that it's likely that this he's he's writing this in you know as fancy of a style as he can, sort of stylized. But the consistency between this and these is very strong. And here with the and is the same thing. So this hairline uh, mark here is very common in secretary hand. Henry Neville used it as you know, examples here of him using it in his fancy letters. Um, the minuscules are not, he doesn't always write them like this. So these are, you know, uh, usually there's a little more curvature than these. The A is a little rounder than he usually writes, as you can see below. The D is quite similar to what we see here. Now, is it an example of somebody else who always made a very rounded A, or is it him just making a stylized inscription? I don't know the answer to that, but it's certainly consistent with his handwriting, consistent with the way he wrote things, and the variation in the D's or in the using the line or whatever is consistent with his handwriting. So that's what the first line, my point about this first line is. Every single word is consistent with Henry Neville's handwriting. Many of the words are very close to Henry Neville's handwriting. Um, so what do we conclude from that? There's two possibilities. Somebody else is even closer and they actually made the inscription or so many points of alignment are evidence that it actually was Henry Neville. So we've gone through this first line and then now we're going to look at the second line, which is in some ways less of a good match for Henry Neville's handwriting, but we'll talk about that next. Okay, now it's time to look at the bottom line here. Now, this is where things get a little more interesting as far as I'm concerned. There are some things that are very close matches and some that are not. And the question is, once again, is this due to someone writing a stylized inscription where they're disguising who they are? Or is this just some that would be Henry Neville, or is it just somebody else's handwriting? Now, this APP for approved is a typical way of writing this. You, will, you would not see people write it quite like this if you look at lots of examples of secretary hand. It's not that unusual, but it's not a, norm, a way everyone would write it. And we have, and it's not the way Henry Neville would normally write it, but we do have some examples of some strikingly close, um, him writing APP in strikingly close ways. So this is an example from a letter from 1594, and the P's are quite similar. Now this one has a, has a line going up, and he usually did have a line going up from his P's. But this, this example below here doesn't have the lines going up at all. But you have these two marks here. 
you have the very thick base. You have the separation. This one's a little bit connected, but um, uh, mostly, uh, probably just overlapping rather than connected. The A also, this is a little bit rounder, I guess, but really quite similar to this. This isn't that much rounded. This has a little bigger tick here, but it does have the little line coming out there. So this is really quite similar um, and uh, a little bit distinctive. Now here we, again, we have this R that looks weird. Um, and I don't know. And we have it here too. So it's a stylistic decision of whoever wrote this or it's their standard R. But that's an open question. The spelling of this word with a U is also not typical for Henry Neville. He would usually spell this with a, a V as in Victor rather than a U. The D is certainly consistent with how he would write it. You can see this example here. And here's an E that's very similar here. So this part is similar to how Henry Neville would certainly write it. The spelling with a U instead of a V is unusual. Um, but this is certainly within the realm of what he could be writing. The next word is unusual, and I don't have an explanation for it. So it's, uh, you know, a double F. This is a double F in secretary hand, R-I-N-D, and that's the word friend. Now, the D you can see below is similar to how he wrote D's. The double F is similar to how he wrote it. And these are standard secretary hand features. But spelling friend, F-R-I-N-D, with double F, is not how Henry Neville typically spelled this word. I've looked at many, many of his letters. He writes the word friend very often. And he usually spells it F, F, single F, R, E, E, N, D. So either this is an, this is, just shows that he did not write this, or it's an example of him writing it in a distinctive way for some reason. I don't think F, F, R, I, N, D is a typical spelling of friend for anybody. So what's going on here? I don't have an explanation. If people can find somebody who writes spells friend that way always and then has a weird capital C like on the first line and all these matches then they would find the the author of this inscription my guess is that we have somebody writing things a little bit in an unusual way but you know that's what research has to do is to do further research into it now this what looks like a 23 is not a 23 it is the letter B. There's no absolutely no question about this, that this is the letter B. And some books published about this have suggested that this is the, like this is a 23 and this is M for May. It's completely wrong. This 23 is a B. I like to call it a 23B. Is a standard secretary hand way of writing B. And Henry Neville wrote his Bs in many many different ways. Capital B. But one of them is in this style, and it's quite, the examples here are quite close matches. Now, this loop here, I have not found Henry Neville making this loop on his 23B, but I haven't found anybody else making it either. So once again, this could be that somebody's idiosyncratic handwriting, or it could be something you know unique to this inscription, uh, stylized. But... The most important thing about this 23B, first of all, the shape of the two and how it gets thicker as it gets goes this direction, and then how the three intersects with it just at the tip. Now, this is a standard secretary hand, but you know we have examples of this Henry Neville doing the exact same thing. He's touching the tip of that three to the base of the two, and then it's thickening here. This, this one is another example of that. And he has the line, which most people do have the line, but not everyone. Not, and even in this example, it does, it's not clear if there's a line. But this is a match for Henry Neville's handwriting. It's not super distinctive, but 
if you look at, and I have looked at a bunch of examples of these in different people's handwriting, maybe 10 or 15% of people are this close of a match. So it's not that, uh, it's 23B is common, but this many matching details, maybe 10 to 15% of people are going to match this closely. And this M is not typical for Henry Neville, but I did find some examples of it in his later handwriting around 1609 when this was written. So these are pretty close matches for this. And the fact that I could only find these examples in his later handwriting, to me, is strong evidence. Because his earlier handwriting, I couldn't find this M. And not until I looked at some later documents did I find something similar. And it really is quite similar. So, I mean, this is hard to see, but this is the word Mr. is written. And this the, uh, the word May is written. And they have this loop on the left, just like this. So, to me, this is also very strong evidence. Now, the question is, who is BM? And as I said before, it's very clear that whoever wrote this inscription didn't want people to know who BM was or, or who they were. So, BM could be the person, could be the name of the friend, it could be the name of the inscriber, or it could just be some random letters with a... With the, you know, a joke meaning or a secret meaning or whatever. So that is pretty much it for this analysis. I want to reiterate the point once again that this is what they call research. And all we can do is compare handwriting and look at the details and con compare it to control samples and then follow the clues and try to get more information. The identity of whoever wrote this is unknown, and only good historical research will answer this question. So this is my first attempt to help solve this puzzle, and I look forward to working with everyone in the world to solve this puzzle and find out who wrote this inscription, because it is an extremely important question relating to the reception and perhaps even the authorship of the works of Shakespeare. So uh, thank you for coming by and listening to me talk. I will have more videos for you. So come back, click like, subscribe, tweet about it, tell your friends, and we will keep pushing forward with good research uh, that is transparent and open and all the kind of things that research should be uh, for your enjoyment and hopefully your edification a bit. Thank you.